Welcome back. We are on the solutions for the Lab 3 generalization assignment. There are four problems, uh, two that should be relatively doable and uh, given the, the lab that we just went over, and the last two, which are worth two points each, are a little bit more complicated. Uh, so let's see how these go. I'm going to switch over to our studio, and I'm just going to copy the lab two from last time. Copy that. I'm going to call it lab three, and uh, we'll start with this. So let's get that open. Just change this to lab three. I'm quickly going to delete everything, so I'm starting fresh. Save it. Come back to the problems. I'm just going to go and copy all this stuff into here and we can get started. I went ahead and edited this a little bit and knitted it just to see what we're looking at. So we've got space to work on these four problems. Let's get started with the first problem. I'm going to make a little R code chunk and I want to create five samples of 25 observations from a normal distribution with mean 200 and standard deviation 100. And I want to compute the mean of each sample and plot the means in a graph using ggplot2. So we've got you know, a distribution that we're going to sample from using R. The mean will be 200. The standard deviation will be 100. And we're going to take uh, out five samples. And in each, we'll take 25 observations. Right, then we want to get the mean of each of these and we want to graph them. So end up with something like this, whatever the means of those samples happen to be. Okay, so for this one, we, we're going to use the R norm function and we want to take 25 samples from a distribution with a mean of 200 and a standard deviation of 100. Every time we do this, we'll get those 25 samples. Um, if we want, f uh, what is it, five samples of 25 observations, we could do, you know, we could do something like this. If we did five times 25, we know we would get a total of 125 samples or observations. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call these observations, and I know that I've got 125 in there. Now, the first 25 are for the first sample, the second 25 are for the second sample, and so on. So I'm going to make a vector that has a number corresponding to each sample. And in order to do that, I'm going to use the rep function, which allows me to repeat a number. So I could repeat the number one 25 times if I wanted to, just like that. Or I could repeat the numbers one to, 20, one to five. Uh, and if I use the each parameter, I will get these uh, 25 ones, 25 twos, 25 threes, and so on until five. So I, if I put all of this into a data frame that I could say samples and observations, then I would have something that looks like this. Uh, so for each row, we've got an observation and we have the, the number that we pulled from the distribution as well as which sample it belongs to. So this, these first 25 belong to sample one these next 25 belong to sample two, and so on. Once we have a data frame set up, we can load up the ggplot2 library, and we can go and plot these samples. But um, before we do that, I think we want to compute the mean of these samples. So we're going to use the dplyr library to do that. And I'm going to create a variable called means. And I will submit the data frame to one of our dplyr processing pipelines. I want to group by 
the samples column. And then I want to do a summarize. And uh, let's call this sample mean. That's going to be uh, the name of a new column. And I want that to be the mean of the observations. And uh, what this is going to do is calculate the mean of the observations for each of the five samples. And that didn't work. I need to load dplyr first, and now that will work. We can look at our new means. It's just a data frame with five rows and the sample mean for each of the uh, five different samples that we took. Now that we have that, and we can use ggplot, we can put the means data frame in there. We're going to set up our aesthetics. The x-axis will be in the means, it will be the name samples. So it's going to go from one to five. The y-axis is going to be sample underscore mean. And we can set this to be, let's make it um, a bar plot. And here we need to set stat equals identity so that it will make a bar that is the actual value of the mean here. And so there we have it. Every time we run this code, we will uh, do all of these steps anew. So we'll generate 125 total observations. Uh, we'll assign them to five different samples and then get the means and get the plot of the means. And there we have it. Let's go on to the second problem. This is asking us to additionally calculate the standard deviation of each sample and then use the standard deviations for error bars. Produce another graph with the means and the error bars. Okay, so we can copy all of this down here. And uh, we've already loaded the, the dplyr and ggplot libraries, so these calls are redundant. Once they're loaded at the, whenever they're loaded at the top of a, our markdown document, they'll remain loaded for the rest of the, our markdown document. So here is our, let's just use some comments, uh, sampling process, get means, and plot means. So these are the three chunks of things that we're doing. Uh, in this problem, we want to uh, keep this part the same. We're gonna continue to um, produce 25 observations for five different samples from the same distribution. Uh, but we want to additionally calculate the sample standard deviation. So I'm gonna make a new variable inside the summarize function. I'm going to use the SD function on the observation. So now we're calculating the mean and the standard deviation. And when we do that, our new data frame has means and standard deviations for each of the five samples. Then we can go ahead and use the geome error bar function. And I always forget how this one works, so I'm going to pause this and go find an example from lab two. All right, I'm just going to copy in some code from lab two. Now, this worked in a different ggplot script, but it calls the geome error bar, and we need to set the, the minimum value and the maximum value for the error bar. So that's going to be the mean, which in our case is sample underscore mean minus, and then we've called the standard deviation sample underscore SD. So I'll change those two. And I could copy all of this in here. But now for the max, it's going to be plus. So this is always going, the, 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 the smallest value of the error bar is going to be the mean minus the standard deviation for that sample. The tallest part's going to be the mean plus that standard deviation and width sets how wide the little hats are. So if we do this, we've now added error bars to our 
observations or to our, to each of our sample means in this plot. Great. We've solved problems one and two. Let's move on to problem three. Here we're going to use R to demonstrate that the mean, specifically the sample mean, across a range of different sample sizes, or n, is an unbiased estimator of the population mean. So this is the sample mean, is an unbiased estimator of the population mean. Now before we do this problem, let's just talk about what this problem is attempting to, what, what is the question here that we're trying to answer? Well, let's say we have some distribution, some, some population, and the mean here is a five. And what, what uh, we're trying to demonstrate is that the mean of some sample that we could pull out, so let's say we pulled out a bunch of numbers here, and pulled out a bunch of numbers here, pulled out a bunch of numbers here, so we've got three different samples. Now we could calculate the mean of each of these samples, and it's not going to be five every single time, but it might be 5.5 or six or three, various numbers. Uh, because there's variability in the distribution, our samples will turn out differently every time. In lab two, we showed that as sample size increases, uh, the mean of the sample tends to approach the mean of the population. However, in this case, what we're trying to determine is whether a sample value is a reasonable estimate of the population value. So if we just took out some sample, and um, let's say we happen to know that the population mean truly was five, and we got some sample mean here, um, let's say it was a four, would this be a good value to use uh, to estimate this value up here, even though it's not going to be the, the correct value every single time? The question is, on average, will it be the correct value? So if we took tons and tons and tons and tons of samples out, and we're going to get all sorts of numbers, you know, around a particular value. So if we get a whole bunch of samples and then a whole bunch of sample means, on average are these sample means a five, effectively. That's what we're trying to determine. Um, let me state that one more time here. So what we're trying to find out is whether the mean of the sample means is a good estimator of the population mean. That's a lot of different means. The population mean is the mean of some distribution that we know about. The sample means, well, if we were to take lots and lots of samples out, each of the samples would have lots of observations. And each of those samples, we could compute a mean. So we'd have as many sample means as we had samples. Now, the question is whether the mean of the sample means is a good estimator of the population mean. I'll leave that up here. So we've got to do a bunch of things to demonstrate this in R. We've got to test a variety of n different sample sizes and we're asked to test 2, 5, 10, 50, and 100. Now for each sample size, we're going to draw 10,000 samples of that size. And then for each sample, we're going to calculate the sample mean. So I've drawn three samples here. We're going to do 10,000. So every time we're going to have 10,000 sample means. And then we're going to calculate the mean of those samples. And we're going to find out if it's close to a known population mean, particular uh, 10 right here from a normal distribution. So uh, let's get this set up. And I'm looking at, OK, this part. Is for the next problem. So here we go. 
we were in problem number three, talking about sample means. Let's open up a new R code chunk. And first of all, I'm going to write R norm and two and a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of five. And I'll just be explicit. So I'll put mean equals 100, SD equals five. So every time I do this, we're gonna draw two numbers from this situation. Now, what I wanna do is just work this whole thing out for a, a n of two and to give us a sense of what we're trying to accomplish here. Okay, and there's more than one way to do this. So I'm going to, let's see, I'm gonna do it like this, two times 100. Let's, let's just do two times 10. So we're gonna ultimately do 10,000, but let's just do 10 for now. These are 10 different samples. Okay, so we should have 20 total observations, but we know the first two are for sample one, the second two are for sample two, and so on. I'm gonna call these my samples. Uh, or actually we called those, oh, sorry, observations before. My samples are going to be, I'm gonna repeat one to 10, because there's 10 samples, and there are two observations in each of them. So if I do this, we should have, uh, I'm gonna put them together in a data frame. So we have our samples, we have our observations. And let's check that out. So here we go, two, uh, for sample one uh, observations, there's two of them, for sample two, there's two of them, for sample three, there's three of them, and so on. Now what I want to do, and did I use the correct, uh, so, oh, we have a mean of 10, standard deviation of five, so I got that part wrong, changed the mean to 10. We're going to calculate the mean of each sample now. So we're going to group by samples, so if I group by, samples. And then we're going to summarize. Uh, let's call this sample means equals mean of the observations. So all that is stored in means here. Okay, so the total data object here has 20 rows because there's two for each sample. The means, these are the means of the two observations in sample one, the means of the two observations in sample two, and so on. I'm seeing these values are near 100, but the mean is supposed to be near 10, so I'm gonna redo all of these things. Now let's take another look. Okay, so that's gone and used the, the new values. So the original data should have values around 10. And now we have the sample means. So the question is, you know, we can see here that the mean, the true mean is a 10, but our sample means are not always 10. They, they vary quite a bit. So if you used, if you happen to only collect one sample, um, you could have gotten an eight and you could have used that to estimate the population mean was an eight, but you'd be wrong. Uh, but you'd be off by two. Uh, you could have happened to get this sample and then you would have said that uh, the, sa the population mean was a 19 and you'd be way off. You'd be nine off because it, it's actually a 10. Uh, if you happen to get this one, you'd be pretty close to 10. See, the point is like any given sample is going to be different. The question is whether the mean of all of these sample means tends to be the correct answer. So how can we find that out? Well, 
we're trying to find out what is the mean of all of our sample means. And we've stored, uh, this is a little bit confusing, so I'm going to read, call this, I'm going to say my, here's the, the data frame containing the observations. Here is the summarized data. And now that, remember, is a data frame. Let's, let's clear the workspace so that we can all see what we're doing here. So we're going to run these three things. Observations, samples, my data, summarized data. This will have um, a column for the different samples and the column for the different sample means. So we want to get the mean of values in the summarized data data frame and which values we want the mean of the sample means. So there we have it. Okay, so we've computed all of this and we see that we got a, this is the mean of the sample means, we got a value of 12. Now that is off from 10, isn't it? So it appears that uh, we ha uh, the mean of our sample means doesn't recover the population mean. But we've only done this 10 times. So it's asking us to do that 10,000 times. So we're going to increase this 10 to 10,000. We're going to do that over here as well. And now there's going to be a lot of values in here. There should be 20,000 different uh, values. Oops, have I done, I think I've done this a little bit backwards. Um, Oh, no, so we've got 10,000, sorry, 10,000 samples and each one has two things in it. So let's uh, check out what happens when we run all of this. We're getting a mean of the sample means very close to 10. Again, pretty close to 10, pretty close to 10, pretty close to 10. So it appears that um, with a n of just two, on average, our the mean of our samples is a pretty good estimator of the population mean. Now we're being asked to do this for a range of different sample sizes. So we could just do this, copy all of this. I'm going to say n is two copy this here and we're going to say n is 5 and change the 2's in here to 5's. So now we're going to have 50,000 total observations because there's going to be 10,000 samples and each of them will have 5 observations. So when we run through all of this we will see that the mean of our sample means is again very, very, very close to 10. And every time we do it, it's close to 10. Now we could continue in this way to do 10, 50, and 100. But I'm going to um, put all of this together in a little loop so that it can automatically do all of these other ones. Before we get started, it can be helpful to think about the final product, that is, we're going to end up with some type of data frame or vectors that that hold the answer to our problem. So let's think about what I want to do here. We're being asked to test ends of different size from 2, 5, 10, 50, and 100. And for each of these observation sizes or sample sizes, we need to do 10,000 samples from this particular normal distribution. Then we need to calculate the means for every of those 10,000. 
And then we calculate the, the total mean of all of that. So the mean of the sample means. I'm just going to call that the mean of the sample means. And uh, this is supposed to be. So we're going to get some number. And we're going to get another number, another, and another, and another. So um, this will be the mean of the sample means for 2, for 5, for 10, for 50, and 100 um, in terms of the sample size. And so it looks like we're going to need some type of data frame with two columns and one, two, three, four, five rows. The first column we could call n, and the second column we could call um, means or something like that. Okay. I'm going to make some comments and talk about Let's grab this whole thing from up here. I think we can more or less use our existing code, but make a few changes to it. So let's put this into a loop because we want to basically do all of these things uh, over and over again for different ends. I'm going to press tab and this helps us uh, see the code be a little bit more organized. Our n value in this case is a 2. So I'm just going to put n here because that's going to be a variable. And I'm going to create a vector called sample sizes. And in here I'm going to place the values 2, 5, 10, 50, and 100. And these are the different sample sizes we want to test. So we, we want n to be 2, then 5, then 10, then 50, then 100. And so inside of our loop, we could use n as the iterator. That'll be, um, and we want to go through each of the numbers in sample sizes. So for n in sample sizes, we can do all these things. And there you have it. This will actually compute uh, our little script here. And it will go through each of these values in sample sizes. So if we were to run this, we should see six things get printed out. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, or two, five, 10, 50, 100. Oh, that's only five things. So there it is. However, we didn't uh, didn't actually print the mean here, but if we do it like this, we'll get those printouts. And as you can see, they're all very close to 10. So this could be a one, one solution to the problem. I would like to visualize it in a, in a graph, I guess. So I'm going to add a few things in order to do that. One more thing before I uh, finish this off with a graph. You'll notice we're getting these red messages here. We'll talk about that in class. Uh, this is a new addition to the dplyr package. And there's some good reasons to have this kind of warning. But it's also annoying if you don't want to look at it. So I'm going to go to the top of my document here. And I'm going to add something in the R setup. I'm going to say message equals false. So I think, oh, let's find out if that did anything. Let's go down here and we can redo this. Okay. So now we're not getting those messages anymore. So if you want to turn those messages off, one way to do it is to go up here and say message equals false. And then you won't get the messages uh, that you might not want to see every, t every time. Okay, so our task now is to plot these values. And there's a few different strategies we could take. First of all, in our loop, we're not saving these values anywhere. We're just printing them to the screen.
So I'm going to create a variable called sim sample means. And this is going to save the values at the end of each of our little simulations for each of the ends. Uh, right now, we have set this up so that we are going through each of the values in sample sizes. And that means we could, that means currently in this loop, we, we're not really keeping track of uh, which position we're on in the loop. We, we have a, a value n and it goes 2, 5, 10, 50, 100. And we have no, no uh, specific way to represent the fact that this is the first thing, second, third, fourth, and fifth thing that we do. So if we had these kinds of values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we could use those as indexes to store information in here. So there's a few modifications we could do. We could say, well, let's go for n in, well, let's actually change this to an i. i in 1 colon length sample sizes. So now the loop uh, will go from 1 to the a sequence involving the number of things here. It's one, two, three, four, five. So it's going to go one, two, three, four, five. So I will be one, two, three, four, five. What we want to do here is instead of n, we want uh, to we want this value to be the successive elements of the sample sizes vector. Those are the n's. So this will go to sample sizes, I position one, then position two, then position three, and so on. So this is slightly different than what we had before. But now that we've set it up this way, rather than printing, what we can do is uh, store this value in position i of this new sim sample means that we've created. So let's run that. When we look at sim underscore sample means, we can see that it has the uh, mean of the sample means from each of the simulations. And this is what I wanted to plot. So the first value will be for sample size two, so that's this x here. The next one will be for sample size five, and so on. So now that I've done all these things, I can create a data frame called sim data, let's say, and I'm going to combine sample sizes with uh, sim underscore sample means. And then we can plot that with ggplot. And I want the x here to be sample sizes. And I want the y to be the sample means. And for this one, I'm going to use a geom point and a line. And oh, I'm missing a parentheses. And if I remember from before, we're going to have to set group equal to one because there's only one group here. And sim data is not found, so I didn't do this yet. Now we do that. It's still not found. Sim sample means. Sim sample means. Oh, right here I made a mistake, and I have to put an S there. So there we have it. Okay, uh, this kind of looks funny in the sense that 
uh, it seems like for these different sample sizes, we get wildly different answers. However, the scale of the y-axis is uh, very, very tiny, and it's all around 10. We can actually change the y-axis. Let's see if I remember how to do that. Right, it's the coord underscore Cartesian, and here you can set a y limb parameter, and that takes two values, the minimum value to the maximum value. So now we've made our graph go from zero to 20, and you can see that the mean of the sample means as a function of different sample sizes is right bang on 10 for all of them. So on average, the mean of our sample means is an unbiased estimator of the population mean in this example. We're on to problem four. We're basically going to do the same thing that we just did. We're going to use this, a Monte Carlo simulation to compare standard deviation formulas, either using divide by n or divide by n minus 1. The question is whether the n minus 1 formula is a better unbiased estimator of the population standard deviation. So here's the standard deviation formula, which divides by n, and here's the standard deviation formula that you use if you're using the sample standard deviation as an estimate of the population standard deviation, and there you divide by n minus 1. So why are there two different ones? Well, it has to do with the concept of a biased or unbiased estimator. And here we're going to use and a Monte Carlo simulation to figure out if one of these is less unbiased than the other for the purposes of estimating a population standard deviation. We need to set up a code chunk. Now if you look up the help file for SD, we'll learn that this one uses the n minus 1 denominator. So R's SD function is this one. We need to write our own. And this one is going to be a function. We're going to take an input, and we're going to take the mean of x minus x. We're going to square all of these values. And we're going to take the sum of all of those values. And we're going to divide by the length of x. So now we've got uh, our own standard deviation that divides by n. And you know what? I'm just going to rename this sd underscore n just to make it more clear. So we've got our sd formula with n minus 1, that's the default, and then sd underscore n will be the one that divides by n. So now that we have that formula, what we really want to do is essentially copy what we did here and instead of computing means of each sample, we're going to calculate the standard deviations of each of our samples. And we're going to use this formula, this formula, and we're going to, um, let's going to erase this just like we did last time. So we have a population here with mean 10 and a standard deviation five. We're going to, for each of the sample sizes, two, five, 10, 50, and 100, we're going to draw out 10,000 samples. So here there's going to be 10,000 10, of these. I'm just going to draw these circles. Each of these will have two observations in it. Here there's going to be 10,000. Each of them will have five in it, and so on. 
Last time, we calculated the mean of each sample, and then we found the mean of the sample means. This time, we're going to calculate the standard deviation of each sample. And we're going to use the divide by n formula and compare it to the divide by n minus 1 formula. And our question is, on average, so that is the mean of all of the sample standard deviations. On average, is that a biased or unbiased estimator of the known population standard deviation? We're going to look at divide by n versus divide by n minus 1. So our loop is set up to do this, the same different sample sizes, 2, 5, 10, 50, 100. Um, we were calculating sample means. Let's calculate the sample SD instead. But we also want to calculate sample SD with an N. And we can use our formula SD underscore N. So we've added that here. And let's save the value, so we need to kind of modify this part. Here we were saving sample means. We're going to save the sim sample SD. Gonna, so I've renamed it. And the name of this will be different in here. It's going to be sample underscore SD. So this will save the mean of the sample standard deviations that we've taken for each of the different sample sizes. And this will use the divide by n minus 1 formula. So let's do it again. Make another variable to save the one where we divide by n. And I'm going to add underscore n here. I'm going to add underscore n here. So I'm just going to try this loop out and see what happens. And if we look at our environment, we should see sim, oops, sim sample, there we are. Sim sample SD, sim sample SD, and we've got these different values. Oh, I forgot to do something in the standard deviation function. So that is, we need to square root everything back down to the original units of the data. Now, the last step here, we need to add in a few more things. So. We want to create a data frame that has 2, 5, 10, 50, 100. That's in the sample sizes vector. And then we want, uh, let's actually, this is slightly different, but let me walk you through this. So we want a, a column that's going to well, geez. Okay, I'm going to erase this. So here's the part from the previous problem where I said it's sometimes useful to think about what the data frame is that you need. And so we have a, a need for a data frame with three columns. One of the columns is going to be for sample sizes. I'm just doing short form here. I'm calling this n. So 2, 5, 10, 50, 100. Now for each of these, we're going to have a, let's call it an estimate. And this is going to be the mean of the standard deviations for each of these different sample sizes. So that's going to be a number. And for this estimate, we, there's a particular formula that we used. So I'm going to call this formula. And maybe we are looking at the one where we divide by n, right? 
So this is a way of representing all the different things we're testing here. Now we also did a whole nother set, and, and that is for the n minus 1 formulas. And there's also values for those, and uh, for each of those we also did 2, 5, 10, and so on. So if we think about how this data frame looks is we've got 10 different rows because this whole section is 5 and it's repeated twice. And the main thing that's changing is the first ones are for, say, n formula and the last ones are for the n minus 1 formula. So we have to kind of make this by hand. And one way to do that is to give our data frame, we're going to give some different names to these columns. I'm going to call the first one n here. And we have the sample sizes vector, but I want to repeat it. So it's going to do these values, and then do them all again. Okay. So that's the first thing. The first column will be called n, and it will repeat the values in sample sizes twice. The next one, I'm going to call it EST for estimate, just like I have here. And this is going to be the, the first five values from, uh, well, let's just do it like we had here. So the ones with N. So that's this variable, sim underscore sample underscore SD underscore N. And then the next five values are the ones stored here. Finally, we have formula. And we now need some names. We want n, 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 and n minus 1, n minus 1, n minus 1. So I can make that just like this. I'm going to rep the letter n five times. And I'm going to then repeat or rep the string n minus 1 five times. So let's see what we get when we do all of this. And we get a table kind of like what we were expecting, or it is what we were expecting. n, 2, 5, 10, 50, 100, then again 2, 5, 10, 50, 100. We've got all of our estimates here, and we've got it using the formula using n and the formula using n minus 1. Cool. So now that we've done that, we can take a look with the graph. We're going to change this just a little bit. So we are still loading in sim data, which is this data frame. The x-axis, which will be the different sample sizes, 2, 5, 10, 50, 100, is now called n. So let's change that to an n. The y values, which are going to be the estimates here, is now called EST. So we'll change that to EST. And now we have a grouping variable, that's the formula. So you either used uh, this level of the group called n, or this other level of the group called n minus 1. So we can call this formula. And now when we plot it, we should see two lines. And we can, let's go from 0 to 10, that'll be easier to see. There we go. So we've got these two lines. And which one of them do you think represents using n, and which one of them represents using n minus 1? It could be helpful to, say, color these lines. So I'm going to say color equals formula. And uh, for each of the different levels, we should see a different color appear here and a legend. Now, if we go back to the question, we can see that the, def the def definition of the standard deviation was a 5. So we were, the known population standard deviation was a 5. If we look at our simulation results, we can see that as the sample size becomes larger, that's over here, 
uh, the mean of the sample standard deviations is basically five, right? So it's a good estimate of the population standard deviation. And that's true for both of the standard deviation formulas. However, when you have a small sample size, like two, five, or 10, notice that uh, these values are all systematically less than five. And so the sample standard deviation, um, no matter how you calculate it, is biased. It is underestimating the actual population standard deviation in this case. Even more, if you look at the formula that divides by n, it's even worse, isn't it? It's even further away from five. Whereas when you divide by n minus one, it's closer to five, even though it's still underestimating the standard deviation of the population. All right, so there we have it. We have used Monte Carlo simulations to look at biased and unbiased estimators. And that's it for this lab.